This here is not waste, and watch this video to find out why. In a garden, it's very easy to grow a surplus of foods, like, oh, I don't need all of this Vietnamese coriander, and I've got all of this chard here. And so the default, if you do have a surplus, is always going to be, is there other people that I can share it with, be it friends, family, neighbors, or local food bank. But, big but, sometimes it's not always possible to share things. We might be busy, might be trying to go away on a little weekend break. And so this video is presenting a case of why putting perfectly edible food on the compost bin is not waste. So in the secret garden behind me, I've been focusing a lot on self-sufficiency. And it's been making me rethink about how we look at waste and how we define waste. And I think it's important to define waste. I forgot what the definition is, haven't it? It says insert definition. So waste is to use or expend carelessly, extravagantly, or to no purpose. So we should bear that in mind. So a lot of you know I'm into permaculture and permaculture is about looking at natural patterns. And we all understand that there is no waste in nature. There's a wild blackberry and there are some moldy old blackberries on here, which as a forager you might think, oh, what a waste. But in nature, it's either gonna fall down onto the ground and it's gonna release those nutrients to supply next year's harvest, or it's gonna keep the fruit fly population in good check. And fruit fly are a bit like the plankton of the earth. They're at the bottom of the food chain, but still very important. So everything serves a function. There is no waste. It's simply nutrients being used in different areas. So why do most of us have a kitchen garden? Well, it's usually to grow food. What is food? Like what are these tomatoes? Well, they're basically nutrients expressed in the form of a tomato that happens to taste quite nicely. But where do these nutrients come from? It comes from the soil. How do we provide those nutrients? Usually it's through compost. And I think a big thing about self-sufficiency is trying to understand where you strike the balance of bringing in compost from external places, as in buying compost just to grow food. Where you draw the line? If you're buying in loads of compost, why don't you just buy in loads of wholesale organic produce? And so what you have, if you're dependent on buying compost, it's not exactly a resilient system. And I think even though I'm never gonna be fully 100% self-sufficient in compost, I do wanna be as resilient as possible. And so viewing the food that we grow simply as expressions of nutrient means that if I put this on the compost bin, it's a nutrient that I can use later down the line when it returns to the soil and I can grow something else in its place. I think in this day and age, a lot of us are trying to grow food in order to create resilience. And I, I think that being resilient is not just about growing food, it's also about producing the nutrition and the fertility that grows that food. It's a bit like, would you rather just have an electric car or would you rather have an electric car that comes with an off-grid solar system? I definitely want the latter. It's the same here in the garden. I don't just want a garden full of food. I want to have the compost and the nutrition that makes that available in the first place. A big part of permaculture is sharing the surplus. And I think that we could put compost bins in that realm of things that we can share a bit of surplus with. And so I can put this chard in here and that chard could be next year's tomatoes, which I'm more likely to eat anyway. When it comes to composting and creating as much as we can, usually we can use waste materials from our local community, which is seen as waste, but not in the eyes of a gardener because we see that waste as another form of expression of nutrients. And also we have crops that might go wrong. This is Tom. Tom is a spaghetti squash that decided to get eaten by something and rotted on the inside. So Tom can make his, his house here in the compost bin. Also all of the plant matter that comes out of the garden, that obviously it's gonna go onto the compost bin, but we don't have to stop at all of the excess plant matter. I don't mind putting on a little bit of surplus of food because there's some scenarios where that might make sense. And we'll run through those now. One example where you might wanna put perfectly edible food on the compost is that you might try a variety of a crop that you really like usually, but the variety just doesn't taste very good. And I think in that case, it would be a little bit cruel to just give that to your neighbor and say, no, I don't like the flavor of this, so you have it. Um, and so going on the compost, 
to grow varieties that you like better next year is a worthy reason. Another example is crops that are either quite perishable, like salads, or ones where you're always gonna have way too much to deal with. This could be spinach, lettuce, chard, etc. And so rather than trying to think of ways of packaging them and giving them to people where it's not wilted, it's perfectly fine just putting it on the compost bin and just harvesting the things you like. For example, you might prefer to eat the stems and so the leaves which are edible, they can still go on the compost. There's a lot of cases in the garden where we do this without thinking because there's so many things that are edible, like beetroot leaves or fennel fronds or even squash leaves. All of these are edible, but we don't really think about it twice. Carrot tops is another one, onion tops. We don't really think about it twice when we're sticking it on the compost. So where do we draw that line? And there wasn't really a line in the first place, which is why I have no shame in putting this on the compost. There may be a time where you get a little bit bored of a crop and your neighbors get bored of it as well. Maru, oh. one tip that I'd want to give anyone in the garden, I think it's something that always adjusts, is grow the things that you're more likely to eat. And this can mean prioritizing where halfway green, during the growing season, you might have something growing that you know, it's nice, something perfectly nice like pak choy or kohlrabi, but then you forgot to sow carrots and you dearly love carrots. And I've got a big bunch of carrots here that are, that are growing nicely. And so what you might have to do is sacrifice one of the crops that you don't quite prioritize so much because you know you're gonna go and eat all of those carrots. So you could either eat them, but if you've grown a bigger amount, you can either share them or just stick them on the compost because they can grow, that compost can grow you more carrots next year. By the way, another real simple way of increasing your self-sufficiency in terms of nutrition and fertility for the garden is creating your own liquid amendments. This is made out of dock, comfrey and nettles, and I can use this for the next two or three years for any crop that I want. A useful exercise to do is just keep a note of crops that you're maybe growing too much of this year. And it's going to happen every year. There's always going to be something that produces loads. But if you kind of make a personal tally and know which things you're going to be able to easily consume, which things you wish you grew more of, like I always wish that I grew more cucumbers. So I've got lots more this year. It means that you over the next few growing seasons, you can better tailor what you grow to reduce the amount of food that isn't going to be eaten anyway. Just for those of you that feel that chucking this cucumber on the compost is still waste. I'm probably going to get a lot of people disagreeing with me and giving me some flack about this attitude towards putting this in the compost is not waste. But the world would be boring if we all agreed on the same thing and we we're all passive. Let's make it interesting. So whilst I always think if we're sharing produce, I always think that we should prioritize sharing it with others. Sometimes we can't always share produce with humans. And so in that case, we can just save the nutrients in the form of runner beans or whatever, compost them down. We've got that bank of nutrients to use to grow whatever we like the following year. And if you're struggling to make compost in a small garden, watch this video here. It shows you how to make compost in your pathway and I'll show you how I did it from start to finish. It works really well.